morning guys. Do we look bright eyed and bushy tailed or what? So last night we worked until oh about 10 o'clock and we called it quits for the night. Even if Jesse and I choose to do that to ourselves, we're definitely not gonna ask people helping us to push that hard, especially when we have a back-to-back -back day. So called in the night last night, we all got a little bit of sleep and we're back at it today. The crane operator isn't gonna come till probably noon. We have a few tasks to finish up this morning. And if we could just have the south wall like ready to complete before his arrival, that would be great. And then we're gonna work together to start the roof sips. Jesse pointed out that this panel here, the end one, does not have lag screws at the top. So that's my first task is to go ahead and put those in. All right, we're working hard through our punch list this morning and everything we're doing now is trying to get us ready so that we can put the roof on. We have some things we overlooked and some things that we made some mistakes on and we've got to get those things fixed as well as some other just uh, tidy up to do. So <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing, but something we made a mistake on was drilling the tenon on the south center post. We drilled it in the post. Oops, <laughs> instead of drilling it in the uh, beam, we effectively did nothing. So there's this beautiful peg that's actually hooked to nothing up there. And we found out yesterday when we raised the panel up, it tried to pull, pull it apart. <sighs> I was up at the top of the ladder like, uh, oh crap. We thought it sheared the peg off until we realized we put the peg in the wrong place. Not bad, we got five out of six, right? So I need to go up there now because once the roof is on, I won't be able to reach to peg that timber. So I've got to get that done right now. It's crazy. Yesterday working on this ladder in the rain felt super sketchy, but now with a wall here, the same ladder close to that edge <laughs> feels totally different. I was like, oh, I'm too close. Oh, I think I'm good. So this peg right here is pegged through this post, but the tenon is up here. So we should have put the peg there. Well, that's it. That was pretty painless. I think we should take a moment and admire this brace and all of its grandeur this morning. Look at that beauty. Oh no, looks like my hat broke yesterday. It's gonna be a long day if I don't have you, hat. These are the, br uh, the brackets that we'll be using to secure the timber frame roof braces to the peak of the house. That's why there's only two of them. So these are going to go on the ridge beam and attach through the rafter. So needless to say, our brackets aren't going anywhere. The brackets aren't going to be visible, but we're going to sleep better at night knowing they're pretty. And I think there's something to uh, a layer of paint Protect keeping them the protected. We went to install our timber frame roof brace and we realized that it's actually going to span two panels. The edge of it is going to be here, but the other edge is going to be here. So even though it's easier to install them on the panels and then raise it as a unit, we're going to have to do what we did yesterday, which is raise the brace after the fact. But I think we have a system down, so it should go smoother than yesterday. It's going to go right there. Next thing we get to do is trim this trapezoid panel a three quarter, three quarters of an inch off the top. We did that on the last one, but last night we kind of forgot to do it to this one as well. So we're gonna have to take all of these screws out, and then we're gonna have to take the hot knife and reset the depth here to three inches. We're finding that for sips, a lot of this stuff 
we really need to just do the job right. So for example, yesterday we discovered that we were accidentally using splines that were just a little bit too thick. Could we have made it work? Yes, but it requires a lot of pounding, a lot of shoehorning, and in the end, it's just not worth it. Take the panel down and do it right. Part of our punch list this morning is getting these brackets installed. I know Alyssa mentioned them earlier and part of the challenge is their location. I'll take you up there and kind of show you why these brackets are proving to be quite a conundrum. So this bracket is going to receive two long all threads that go through the rafter, through the sip, and through that timber and will suck this whole thing tight. The challenge is, once we put the roof on, we'll only have this much room to get in here to work. The other problem is, on the timber, we want to countersink the bolt and then place a dowel in its place so that it is not visible from the outside, just keeping a nice finish. Getting all that done without difficulty is going to be challenging. So I've got to drill this direction because I can't reach out there to get a drill bit in, nor do I think we could get a drill bit through between the brace and the timber. So this little guy is going to be quite a project. We have one of these on the north and on the south. Well, I guess I made another mistake. In my mind, this bit was long enough, and I think that's because our plan was to mount, to do the drilling on the post and the sip before we put it on the house, and then to drill the rafters after the fact. So, my bit is nowhere near long enough, so we're going to need to get a 24 inch uh, auger bit. I've got a friend who has a lot of tools. He's helping us today, and I'm hoping he's got the right bit. Kind of helps to have a lot of different people with a lot of different tools, so he's gonna run home and see if he's got the two foot long version of this auger. I don't know why in my mind, I think I thought we bought the two footer. <laughs> oh, everything's a blur, it's all a blur. So here's hoping we'll get these drilled and get these bolted. So then when we're done putting that on, we've got some GRK or timber lags that are gonna go into the ridge beam make a nice strong connection there. There's actually another set of these holes down lower, uh, but we can get to those after the roof is on because they're quite a bit lower on the, the post there. Part of what's hurting us right now, it's not the problem, but these sit panels are not snug tight. We're not, we're not tightening everything up yet. We've been kind of leaving all the panels a little loosey-goosey to help with installation, which is obviously making the gap uh, bigger, but we're still gonna come up like four inches short. The next thing we have to do is put a top plate on the south wall. We don't have one on the north wall, and that's because the south wall is so window heavy that we're stick framing it more or less to provide a lot of rigidity for those windows because those bottom windows are seven feet in height. Wow, they don't look that big from down here, but trust me, they look really huge from the inside. So basically, on the top of the panels by the rafters, we have a three inch inlet. So we're gonna need two pieces of two by lumber running all the way to the peak. So all of that needs to be carried to the loft. And we're going to need some of that lumber sent to the loft as well. I'm going to do a few 45 cuts, do a little measuring, boom, 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 glue and screw, done.
looks like a really long whatever it's called. I, uh, I did the first one. I didn't like the weld on it. Oh, and yeah. so I was like banging it on the concrete and it wasn't moving. I was like, eh. <laughs> I banged it a couple more times and it like just went, eh. and I was like, aha! So I cut wow. it apart and re it. Hot damn. So, looks like he went deep sea diving. <laughs> and then right? he came home and welded it. <laughs> did you get this off the Titanic? Yeah. <laughs> Not at the moment. All right, let's see if this big honking bit will do the job. Well, looks like I didn't get it sharp enough, maybe. So we're gonna have to do a little better job sharpening that bit. So I forgot to film, but finally got it. Just took some good muscle to get this auger through, and we are through. The good news is I think we can go ahead and mount our steel bracket here, but we can't put the all thread in. Why? Because it's actually recessed on that side, and we need to countersink that hole with an inch and a quarter bit so we can put the dowel in there. So I think what's important here is that the bracket is mounted and it's ready to receive that all thread coming in because we can put that on after the roof is on. We just needed to get this drilled and get the bracket mounted. Trevor, I'm ready for you up here. So we realized last night as it was getting dark and we put this trapezoid panel in that uh, we had trimmed the west trapezoids by three quarters of an inch but we did not do the east side and this panel is already set. So we have to take it back out and trim it and hot knife it. Uh, Alyssa's already done the trapezoid that goes down there. So a lot easier to do this stuff on the ground. Stop! Line up, slow! Okay, you're free. Hold it, hold it. Move my ladder to hear that. Maybe uh, so help them. Move them. Move them. Looks good. All right, on to helping Alyssa get the top plate attached. Let's do that trapezoid. Uh, yeah. Last roof brace. Looking mighty fine, looking mighty fine. There's a ton of screws where this freaking brace goes. Hey Trevor, I'm gonna have to have you pick this extension ladder and set it on the outside. Cause there's spline screws that go between those panels. I gotta put them in before that bracket will go on. Midday check-in. There's a lot of roof sips moving over here. Let's see what they're up to. Jesse said the, pan the first panel you guys needed was on the bottom. We have a unit over there. So we have to wow. Out all of these units. Oh my gosh, that sucks. So we went for the second one first. Wow. And now we're trying to get to the first panels. So oh my gosh. And well, try to keep them in some sort of an order so we don't get them all scrambled. Yeah. What in the bee's knees? 
do we have going on over here? What the heck? Oh, we've got to put some screws on the outside. Hmm. Okay, stop. Line down uh, three feet. Okay, stop. It's all good, Jesse? Yep, it's all good. Can I screw it again? Yep, put another one. It's not going. Yes, that's what I mean. That impact can't do that. Okay. You have to get a different impact to get okay. the drill. Well, guys, we did it. The south wall is officially done. And we have our top plate officially done. Braces are done. So I think we're going to take a short break and then we're going to talk about our strategy for the roof. I think our goal today is just to get a couple panels on, one panel on. We just really want to see what we're talking about. It's not going to be fast. We're probably not going to get to the ridge today and we're going to be happy with whatever progress we do make. Yes, this is what we have to do just to flip these panels. They're so huge. Yeah, let's grab a chalk line and uh, we should be able to chalk line the panel which will help us orient the sheetrock and then uh, we'll have to cut the sheetrock, get it fitted, get it screwed on and I think while it's in this orientation we should do the chase, the this part, the foaming, the, the routering part or whatever yep. and then once it's up on its side we'll actually do the, uh, the drilling into the chase because okay. uh, as we've done from the outside. So. Okay, let's do it. Drywall little, squares. He needs a drywall square. Yeah, he needs a drywall square. Then you'll walk straighter. Your back won't hurt. Here's cancer. <laughs> so basically, we're not doing the full panel because we want our seams of our drywall to be staggered. Correct, Jesse? Uh, this is our eave overhang. Oh right. And then we're oh. we're actually overlapping our, our seams about four inches. Is okay. all. Yeah. So on our eave, duh, it's gonna be outside. We don't want drywall outside. What did I just measure? It's all your fault, Justin. <laughs> There's a really good reason why we're not filling you in on a lot that's going on right now. It's chaos. We'll fill you guys in when we have a system down, okay? Trust me, you'll thank me for it. Yeah, the bottom two feet, right? So we have a lot of bees and wasps flying around here today and we keep joking like, oh, I'm gonna get stung. Finally happened. Went into the bathroom, got stung by a wasp. Don't worry, it's not where you think it is. Wow, it's pretty good welt right there. Anna said give it half an hour and if I can still breathe, I'm probably good. How's it feel, Jesse? I don't know. I do feel like we're a bit of a circus right now, like. Oh geez. What's the problem? Go ahead and put those all the way in, Sue.
What's that thing sticking out of the house? I know, right? How does it look? Looks amazing. Oh, looks good. We are so pooped, guys. We decided to call it quits early because everybody is exhausted today. And we thought about getting one more panel up, but getting the panel takes 20 minutes, prepping it takes 20 minutes, putting it up takes 20 minutes, fixing our mistake takes 20 minutes, putting it up takes 20 minutes. Before you know it, it's long past dark. Everyone's even more exhausted, really hungry, patience is thin. So tonight we decided to call it quits early because our goal for the day, really in addition to getting the south wall done, was just to get a single roof panel up, which we did. And just doing that, we were able to work through a lot of problems and already create somewhat of a system. I think what's really hard to describe is how the roof is completely different. Mm -hmm. It's still a sip but yet it has nothing really in common with all the sips that we've been doing. Right. It's at an angle, it's really high up, and it's it's just different. The spines and, are different, there's yeah. drywall, there's just, there's a lot to think about. And this particular panel is an eave panel, so there's nothing for it to bear against. Nothing more than a chalk line for us to line it up with. So it took some practice and we had some issues, and that's just kind of how the first panel always goes. It seems like it's just, takes all day. I remember milling the timber frame was that way. The first day was one log. And I remember thinking, I'll never get this timber frame milled. But I think having all this help and having Trevor, the crane guy here, has been great. We're definitely tired. Mm -hmm. We had kind of a goal, but the goals are always fluid. I mean, we're always adapting our goals to reality. But I think we're happy. I think the last few videos you guys have seen, kind of just on the sip install, especially since my parents have been here, it's just been really, really chaotic. It's been a lot of troubleshooting. It's been really hard to film. We won't really talk about filming much while building a house, but filming the past week has been very frustrating. So we've tried to capture as much as we can, but things are yep. just moving so fast that we don't really have time to slow down and talk about what's happening. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the ride. I think what's really another thing that's hard to convey is how every wall is basically a new project. It still sips, but it either adds the element of height or in the case of the south wall, a ton of lumber and geometry. So we're not starting from nothing, but there's still a tremendous amount of troubleshooting and learning and fitting and things. And so SIPs have been a lot more difficult, I think, than we thought. But at the same time, they were easier because I remember back during the winter, we originally had talked to Shelter and they assured us that we could do it. And here we are. We've had a bunch of and people who've never built houses before putting sips together and doing it. That's freaking awesome. Today, in the last couple of days, it seems like at the end of the day, we kind of have a punch list. Like we have all the stuff that we have to get done, but then there's like what we really get done. But sometimes there's things we have to do so that we don't forget. And one of those things is we have to put some collated screws in this panel over here. So we still don't have a great system for these roof panels because there's still just a lot we don't know about them. but. Um, something we do know is that these splines, we really only need the outside spline, the top exterior spline, but we're putting the interior splines in because there's a groove for it. It's just extra fastening, um, but we're using the collated screw gun for nearly everything. So if you want to throw a few screws in here, I think that's it for the night. Yep, go out. So is that it? That's it. Okay. You did it. Thanks for all your help today, Trevor. We'll see you again soon.